<clears throat> Hi, I'm Jeff Murrow. I want to welcome you to True Texas History, where today, September the 13th, back in uh, 1883, uh, we had a significant event that happened in Texas history. And uh, what happened on that day was that um, Mabel Doss Day's Ranch uh, had their wires cut, uh, all the barbed wire. Um, now, uh, you know, when you read events like that, a lot of times you think, okay, what's the big deal? So this, this rancher had the barbed wire cut. Uh, it, it was definitely a big deal. First of all, uh, the ranch that she was in charge of was huge. We are talking 83,000 acres, huge ranch. And uh, when you talk about cutting fences, it wasn't just cutting a few holes. Uh, the people that uh, did the fence cutting, you're talking about hundreds of miles of fence cutting. So it was a big deal. And um, in some circles, they consider this event uh, a watershed type moment uh, for uh, the fence cutting wars in Texas because uh, many of the uh, ranches were starting to put up uh, barbed wire. And in fact, you know, some of the uh, anti fencing people were referred to it as the devil's wire. And um, she uh, was very upset about what happened. Of course, uh, Mabel Doss Day, as she is called, because originally her name was Mabel Doss, and then she married um, a fellow by the last name of Day, and they were married from 1879 to 1881, a very short period of time, uh, mainly because he was killed uh, in a stampede incident, and she inherited the ranch. So uh, here she is, a widow, uh, roughly about three years into, um, no, actually two years, uh, into handling this, you know, uh, 83,000 uh, or 87,000 uh, acre ranch, and this happened. Um, and of course, you know, she was left with options. I mean, should she uh, call in the Texas Rangers? Should she, uh, you know, call up her neighbors and they set up a, a vigilante group to watch the fences, um, so forth? She had many options that she considered. Um, but what she went ahead and did was uh, to go ahead and pursue the issue diplomatically. She wrote letters to uh, the governor uh, and uh, people at the state level. At that time, we were dealing with uh, Governor John Ireland, or uh, Oxcart, John, Oxcart John, as they referred to him. Um, because she was not getting any uh, much help um, from uh, the county level. And so since at the county level, uh, nothing was happening, she took it up to the state level. And uh, I mean, bear in mind that this is uh, September of 1883. By February of 1884, there was a law passed against fence cutting, which made it, uh, gave you prison time and also made it a felony. Um, now, uh, just by making it a law did not stop the people from doing it. Uh, the fence cutting went ahead and uh, continued and she ended up having to write the uh, later governor, uh, Governor uh, Lawrence Saul Ross, um, about the matter and he went ahead and uh, took some action. Now, you know, in terms of the fence cutting, you know, I wanted to go ahead and explain that uh, the fence cutting was happening on a massive scale, but also um, public sentiment was for her. Uh, in her approach, uh, she used persuasion and making an appeal as a way of dealing with this thing. Uh, when she wrote to the governors, uh, she made it a point to write to them as a rancher. She never mentioned that she was a woman. She did not play uh, the gender card at all. Uh, instead, she was approaching them as a rancher, 
uh, as a citizen of Texas and wanting them to take action, and they did. Uh, now, because she had this rousing campaign, it did uh, stir up public sentiment against the fence cutters. In fact, at that time, fence cutters were seen as uh, almost the equivalent, well, literally the equivalent of communist and socialist here in America. I mean, they were, uh, you know, uh, keep them away, the bad news guys. Um, so uh, she managed to get the laws passed, managed to uh, demonize fence cutters, um, and uh, that all started from one uh, wild night where there was a lot of fence cutting at a ranch. Uh, so I wanted to go ahead and talk about uh, her today because this is the anniversary of when that whole episode occurred. Uh, you know, Texas is full of fascinating stories like that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and um, tell others about uh, True Texas History. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, or topics you want me to address, feel free to write to me. Uh, and I'll be glad to get back to you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, until later, bye, Dios, my friends. Goodbye.